Welcome to episode 180 of the Twim Show. This is your Sajid. And today I'm covering the news and updates from the week of September 29, 25 to 29, 2023. Also, first, another thing I need you to know that today's episode, I'm switching things over. So the most important updates are pushed to the front and the least important updates are pushed to the end. So what this will do is it will give you all the updates that you really, I feel like are most important. You're going to be able to hear them f- uh, first. And then obviously, if you think, you know, oh, these are things I don't need to hear, you can just drop off. Hope this helps. Let me know how that goes. <clears throat> okay. With that, uh, first thing uh, is, is Google lying uh, lying about using clicks in rankings? So, you know, the Google is on trial. Uh, the U.S. government has brought an antitrust uh, lawsuit against Google saying they're, they're a monopoly. They're using their uh, position as the leading search uh, provider to dominate and to stifle competition. That's what it's all about. So now, as part of the things, a lot of good stuff are coming out. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to bash Google. They're a business, so they have to make money. But, you know, Google used to have this motto about don't be evil. And apparently they have lost their way. Uh, And you're going to find bits and pieces of it as I cover this episode. But first here, what we have is like, you know, this ex-Googler, Google engineer um, who used to work at Google for 17 years. Uh, Obviously, now he's an ex-Googler. And he was on stand and he was testifying that, you know, even though Google has basically said, hey, we don't use click data for search engine ranking, he feels like, you know, that Google, while they're slowly moving away from that because of uh, adva- advancements in uh, machine learning systems such as BART and MUM, but he still feels that, you know, it is being used. Now, yeah, it's not a really a uh, marketing update, but at the same time, it is somewhat affecting all of us who are in the organic space, search engine space, uh, whether it's clicks, uh, organically or whether it's ad. So I thought I'd share with you that, you know, again, there is no direct correlation and what he's actually saying, which is Eric, by the way, that's his name, Eric Lemon. Uh, he's worked uh, for 17 years at Google on search quality and ranking. What he's saying is, look, even if we do it, it's not direct. And obviously, Google has a vested interest to say, you know, hey, we public and vested interest to publicly deny saying that, you know, hey, we don't use, uh, you know, user interactions, click data to rank only because if everyone, if they were to say that, everyone is going to find a way to game the system. So that's another thing. Now, what do you have to do as the owner of a website or what do you should you do? Should you like, you know, go ahead and hire uh, copywriters or, you know, click farms that's going to do, you know, go online, search for your words and as your websites come up, click on it and then kind of do that again and again? The answer is no, absolutely not. Please don't do that. Uh, I think eventually you're going to get caught. Google has more intelligent systems because remember, they've been at it for last 25 years. So they have figured out, you know, more sophisticated systems to figure out which click firms are uh, click jacking or not click jacking which click firms are uh, doing what kind of shady stuff and then eventually uh, you they are going to probably ban your website completely uh, and please don't do that to your competitors either um, so what I'm trying to say is that while we do cover a lot of information from Google in this show I feel like you know going forward after what's coming out you may want to use your best judgment. Uh, again, Google probably uses uh, click data in relation to 20 other different systems, 20 other different you know uh, signals. So it's not a direct, that does not necessarily mean Google is lying, even though the government is trying to paint the picture that you know Google is lying. I will allow you, I will let you make your own decision to me, you know, as part of the business. Yeah, there is a lot of cloak and dagger, even in the SEO industry, just because of, or there is a lot of uh, cloak and dagger, a lot of systems are opaque just because of the nature of the industry. Because, you know, if they were to say, hey, these are the 10 things you should do. And this, if you do that, you can get on first page. Everyone's going to try to go for it, right? Every And then there's going to be those black hat people and you're going to see all this crappy uh results that you we used to see back in the day when there was uh, Yahoo and Alta Vista and what Excite and all those things and if you don't know what those search engines are 
you know, just be happy that, you know, you grew up with Google and not all those things. Uh, back in the day when we had to search 20 different search engines to find one answer and Google came in and they basically made everything better for us. Now, having said that, I want to also say I'm not a big Google fan just because of what is going to be shared with you later in the show. But at the same time, you know, it's just okay. Then the next update is, is Google playing fair. And this is, I think, what you need to do is some of the things that came out during this, uh, you know, during this uh, trial, uh, as it continues to come out, is like, you know, there were like leaked emails from Google ad executives where they're saying, hey, you know, to get more revenue numbers, what we need to do is we need to tweak the search algorithms, we need to tweak... Uh, how many people are sent to the ad in the Chrome OS or Chrome browser, things like that. These are really bad business practice. Uh, in fact, to the point where there was a senior Google executive who was go who prepared a presentation uh, for a university or for a class. And there, in, and he's claiming he didn't give this presentation, but there he was claiming that, you know, uh, Google search advertising business is similar to selling drugs, stating that Google can, uh, you know, ignore users and focus on generating revenue from advertising. Uh, it's just a lot of things coming out. And it just shows, you know, what happens when a company loses core values and, you know, they solely try to focus on the bottom line, which is, you know, increasing revenue, increasing profit, which thereby uh, not only makes you look good on the Wall Street in front of your boss, but also like, you know, gives you more uh, revenue and in your pocket. How so? Well, a lot of the Google employees have Google stock. So if they do well, they get also more stocks added to them. That's number one. Number two is there. And then if they do well, the Wall Street, the stock value goes up. And if so, their personal fortunes also go up. So having said this, you know, they just have done a lot of shady things. They have basically played around with uh, ad cost, which was covered in the last episode, which is 179. And now they have, and in, in the past, you know, John Miller has come out and says, hey, there is no way the search team talks to the ads team and the Chrome OS team because, you know, they're all walled off. But looks like during the discovery phase, the government is saying that's not true. We have found emails that discusses not only, you know, tweaking the ad prices, tweaking, you know, how much of... Uh, how much they're going to play around with, you know, uh, organic search results and how they're going to bump off organic search results and then they're going to push ads up, things like that. It just basically looks like it's a big mess. And now in Google's defense, just so that in Google is another spotlight, I want to also share with you, like, you know, um, chances are if they were to subpoena Facebook, they're going to see the same kind of shady stuff happening over there as well, right? Everyone's like doing something crazy because, you know, there is no oversight, there is no oversight. There is no third party monitoring the systems saying, are you really doing what they're doing, right? Who's the monitor? There is no one. So they're just basically saying, hey, it's a black box. It's an auction and it's a Dutch auction. Uh, and, you know, got, we got to go buy it. But at the end of the day, it's the small businesses that are suffering. But I just wanted you to know this is what's happening. There's no action for you. I just wanted to inform you. Okay, now Google's John Miller is defending their official SEO advisor. Some people are saying, you know, hey, you're doing this and, you know, why are you doing this? Uh, you know, why do you give us SEO advices? And he's saying, you know what, we need to give you SEO advices. Yeah, we know sometimes people are going to use those SEO advices and create sites, websites just primarily for Google. But nevertheless, I think overall it's good for the web uh, industry. And I believe that, uh, you know, we do need uh, SEO advices in generic terms. I mean, you know, not everything is kosher as we have figured out by now. But still, I think of having official information from Google is very, very helpful. Just because, like in this show, uh, just by doing this show, I feel like, you know, I've given a lot more clarity and a lot of stuff that was otherwise just a myth and that would have just kept on persisting. So, yeah, John is right. Uh, that he is helping us. Uh, he is helping uh, my show listeners. So, you know, there is nothing against it. But then there will always be bad apples. But I think they kind of balance it out pretty well. Okay, uh, with that, John is also saying, you know, that look, Google can choose to ignore your website even if it has high quality content. Now, obviously, given the last, the first two updates, obviously we figured out sometimes Google's play around with it. But Google, John is saying, look, 
just because you have high quality content does not mean there is no guarantee that we will choose to index your site right there's nothing you can do you just have to be at, stay at it right now this is not really a good uh you know thing for you to tell your clients or your customers or yourself but that's just the nature of the business we're in right and i tell all my clients as well you cannot just rely on seo because seos could work today and it's gonna tr turn off tomorrow algorithm changes everything you've got to have at least multiple uh prongs uh underneath your website which is one is the ad traffic and one is the seo traffic and then you know that way you can they basically they support each other's right and without it you're just on a shaky ground until the day you know there is a big algorithm changes whether it was the helpful content update or anything else and then you know your traffic tanks and now you're like you know your hair is on fire you don't want that uh, so that's all there is that, you know, John Miller is saying, look, there is no high quality pages aren't guaranteed indexing. That's all he's saying. Okay. Um, there are two updates in the YouTube industry. One is that Google has launched a view, video view campaigns, v VVC. It's a new campaign type that uses AI to target audiences more efficiently. VVC offers a variety of ad formats that have been shown to achieve 40% more views and 30% lower cost per view compared to traditional in-stream skippable uh, cost per view campaigns. Uh, like VVC is a new type of campaign, ad campaign that leverages artificial intelligence to target audiences more precisely. Unlike traditional in-stream skippable CPV campaigns, VVC cam combines various ad formats like skippable in-stream ads, in-feeds ads, and shorts ads to maximize reach and engagement. It's just AI driven, that's all. On the non-ads front, YouTube has rolled out a new analytics feature that offer insights as to why subscribers cancel their membership through the use of exit surveys and how new and returning viewers are engaging with the channel content. So overall, if you have an organic YouTube channel, these three are gonna be good, especially if you have a paid YouTube channel. Uh, like you know, people, Google is gonna say, hey, do you want to take this optional exit survey? Some people do, and you get some more idea. Maybe it's expensive, maybe they're not seeing value, what not. So that's a good front. And then obviously how new and exit returning users are using your content is also a good insight. Talking about <clears throat> updates, uh, Google has announced that their tw September 2023 helpful content update uh, rollout has been completed. So basically this year, the update ran from September 14th to 28th, and we have covered all the, basically the things, changes in the uh, this update or things that have been uh, affected by this update, but mainly Google's gener uh, machine generated content. Google has softened its stance on AI generated content, making it more consistent with other guidelines and creating useful material. Uh, Google has up given kind of a warning to hosting third-party content on your website's primary domain or subdomain unless it's closely related to the main site's purpose. And Google has given out new advice for websites that have experienced traffic loss due to update, suggesting you that you identify or remove or replace unhelpful content. I know third one is not very helpful, but it is what it is, right? Okay. Uh, Google is also saying, look, Google discovered traffic can and may fluctuate. Uh, this is because of changing interest, content types, and updates to Google search algorithms. And Google is saying that, you know, any traffic that you get on your website through Google discovery should be considered supplemental and you should, it can always, you know, kind of go away. So don't rely on Google discovery uh, traffic. Now, what is Google Discover? If you're not sure, it's a personalized content feed that shows articles, videos, or other content that you might be interested. So I have Google app on my iPhone, and when I go launch the Google, I see a lot of content based on my interests uh, that Google thinks I'm going to see, and sometimes, oftentimes, it's quite helpful. Uh, I see it, and I read it, and I spend some time on it. That's all. Okay. Next up, uh, one of the things that came up during the you know this week's uh, trial <laughs> between U.S. the government and Google is like you know Microsoft's. Let me see, uh, Microsoft CEO of advertising and web services basically said, hey, they had offered more money to Apple and Samsung to say, hey, take Microsoft Bing as your default search engine and drop Google. Despite giving them several billion dollars more, both Apple and Samsung has declined. And this goes to show that, you know, if you have a second class product, uh, good companies will not take your money. S simple as that, because Apple has a lot more to lose by 
you know, embedding Bing as the main search engine over Google just because of the type of results you get. And I, I share this from my own personal experience. I oftentimes use, uh, you know, Bing.com to search on things. And, you know, I will search for a few seconds or max 25, 30 seconds. And then I'll get frustrated and I'll head over to Google.com and I'll search it just because it's easier to get an answer right away, especially on complex stuff. Some easy stuff, it's good to get it. Uh, Bing can make a good match. But usually uh, it's Google that I will end up with complex stuff and also I'm also a user. I, I am used to the Google interface. It's easier, cleaner, so and Microsoft Bing can be a little bit crowded and it's just like confusing. So those are my op opinions. What are yours? Uh, do you agree? Uh, do you think, you know, Apple and Samsung should have just taken the money and just gone with whoever is paying them the most money? If so, then you Apple will not be Apple, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Google has launched a new YouTube uh, series called SEO Made Easy. The link to the channel is obviously in the show notes. Uh, a, their go goal is to help beginners and experienced website owners optimize their sites for better search engine performance. The first episode was hosted by Martin Split from Google Search Relations team and focuses on using structured data to customize how our websites appear in Google search results. Now you, the business owner, should not be watching that YouTube video and playing around with it. You should have either your marketing person or someone, your assistant should be kind of watching it and figure it out should you use this or not. Right Again, uh, you need to be on a CMS or a website provider, a hosting provider that allows you to kind of play around with structured data. You know, I'm not sure if Wix or Squarespace allows you to do that or not. If not, WordPress is always a choice. Okay, uh, the other thing you need to know, Google has launched or announced a new crawler called Google Extended, not Google Bot. Google Bot is the one that does crawling of your website for organic search results. Google Extended is for is the crawler that's gonna crawl your website for uh, the Google AI BART as well as other stuff that Google is coming out with. Now, if you're a website owner, you don't want your content to be indexed, so you want to update your robots.txt file and make sure you say Google, disallow Google extended, right? And they're gonna ignore that. Or <laughs> not ignore that, they're gonna honor that. I apologize for that mix up. And lastly, for this week, uh, Chat GPT has brought Browse with Bing back. Uh, Browse with Bing is basically the plugin that allows you, uh, Chat GPT, to browse the internet and find answers to your questions online in real time because Chat GPT has data only up to September 2021. Uh, when Bing uh, Browse with Bing was initially launched, there were some privacy concerns. Uh, it went beyond uh, behind the paywall and brought all this stuff. And now, because Chat Browse with Bing honors uh, robot.txt file, which is basically says if it says disallow open API web crawler, it's just gonna disallow it. So it's honoring that. So now it's been back on. Uh, I've used uh, Browse with Bing, and I've also used VoxScript uh, plugin. The results I get back from Vox, using Vox script plugin is way better, richer uh, than that I get with Browse with Bing. That's just, just again to show, you know, <laughs> Google is a better search engine. Microsoft still has a long way to catch up. Okay, folks, that's it for this week in marketing. Until next week, this is your Sajid signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.